Welcome back to the Shrikecast. My name is Andrew Krauthemmel, and today it's going to be a little short, but we are going to talk about dynamic DNS and what it means to you as a network administrator in relation to your sonic walls. So, <clears throat> some of you may be uh, maybe used to dynamic DNS. Some of you may be new to it, but there's some providers out there uh, who have applications you can install on your desktops or as we'll see through other means update a, di a DNS name that you choose uh, to your currently available IP address. What this is usually used for is if you want to uh, remotely access some sort of service at your home or on your computer running at home or something like that or a small office uh, you'll have that running on a computer and there's a little agent that will update your IP address at the uh, the service hoster uh, and then you'll go to whatever my name is dot something dot com and, and then you you can access whatever port forwards that you would set up to your location so it gives you a uh, a way around the dynamic IP address problem where if you have a basic plan from a service provider you're gonna have a changing IP address on occasion because it's dynamically allocated and that's what the uh, the cheapest plans usually give you uh, unless you pay extra for a static IP so what you can do with dynamic DNS uh, especially in relation to uh, management of your firewalls remote management as well as SSL VPN and even site-to-site -site VPN connections is use that dynamic DNS to your benefit so that's what we're gonna go through today so the first thing uh, you're gonna want is to create a dynamic DNS name. Uh, the one I use is DynDNS, a real popular one. There's other providers out there that are compatible with Sonic Walls. But for example, you can go in here, create yourself an account, and they have a free account where you can make, uh, right now it's they, they've reduced it, so it's down to just one free domain name. Uh, but you can create a domain name uh, under your account, call it whatever you want, and then you have a series of suffixes you can choose from. I normally use dnsalias.com because it's kind of generic, but they have hundreds of ones to choose from for whatever purposes you may enjoy. You go through and create that account. So, uh, just all you really need to know is your account login information and the uh, DNS name that you chose and then we can take that info and put it into the sonic wall. So after we've created our DNS name we're gonna go to network dynamic DNS and we're gonna add our dynamic DNS that we have signed up for. <clears throat> You'll see that enable the profile is already enabled by default and it asks for a profile name. Uh, the profile name really is just a descriptor for this DNS that we're setting up. I normally make it the same as your DNS uh, address that you chose. So whatever whatever DNS name you chose, I usually make it the profile as well. So this is going to be my DNS name dot DNS alias dot com. And I said there's some other providers out there that are compatible with Sonic Walls and the built-in firmware. Here they are. As you can see, 9DNS is the default, so that just ends up being the one that I use, but if you like no IP or the other guys, then they also work as well. You have to put in your username and password for your 9DNS account. So that'll be my account, 12345, whatever my password might be. And then we're going to have to enter in that domain name that we signed up for. You can choose a specific interface to bind it to. If you have multiple uh, multiple interfaces, you can have a primary and a backup dot mydomain.com my or something like that. I normally just have it to any, which makes life easier for failover situations. Uh, you have some other things you can choose in here for MX records, but for a basic setup, this is really all you need. The one thing I do suggest you do, though, is go to the Advanced tab and tell it to let the DDNS provider detect the IP. If you choose that first option that's automatically selected for you, uh, it will set your IP to whatever the WAN interface is set to, which sometimes may be bad. Let's say you hook your SonicWall up to a Comcast SMC modem, which are very popular right now for business use. 
Well, the Comcast modems normally give out 10.1.10. something as their their network. That's that's a subnet they're set for on the LAN side. And I normally leave those not you know in a, in a standard net setup, and I'll just do a DMZ to the Sonic wall. So if you have this DDNS set up to automatically set the IP to your WAN IP, well then that means that your DDNS is going to be set with 10.1.10. whatever the modem will give you or whatever you statically assigned on that private LAN. So it's not going to be very useful if you're trying to get to it from the outside. If you say let the DDNS provider detect, then it sends out some, some packets and data to the DDNS provider. They figure out your public IP from that, and they set it that way. It, it works a lot nicer. I like to do it this way. So then all you have to do is click OK, and it'll add that in there. Uh, I'm on the demo, so of course it's not going to let me save it. But if we click OK, It'll have that profile, domain name, and other information show up here. Uh, and then there'll be a checkbox to enable or disable it. And there's going to be some status information. And if everything looks good, it'll say status is online, and it'll show you your DDNS name and IP address, and everything will look OK. Now, what is this useful for? I mentioned management. So let's say you want to remotely access your sonic wall from anywhere in the world. You want to get in through secure management. I mentioned this uh, on the SSL VPN video that you can go in and set up some of this for user login and management of your WAN. So instead of, if you have a dynamic account and instead of remembering an IP address or instead of continually trying to figure out what your IP address is, you can just set HTTPS management on so that you can log into your sonic wall from anywhere in the world and, and change your settings securely and encrypted. Uh, and just simply use your DDNS name. So by default, the, the DDNS name will allow any sort of connection through to the IP uh, unless you enable their security features. So that gives you a great way of getting to your sonic wall from anywhere in the world with, it, uh, with no concern as to what IP address it might be. It'll automatically update it all the time. Same goes for using SSL VPN. If we turned on user login and use HTTPS, well now you can have people log in your sonic wall with a DNS name and you don't have to buy a public, uh, a static public IP. You can just use the dynamic account, keep yourself on a cheap plan from your internet provider, and everything will work 99.9% .9 of the time, and it works just fine. You can also set it up on a site-to-site -site tunnel. This is something that a lot of vendors do not support, uh, Cisco included last I checked, but SonicWell does, which is really, really nice for those who are trying to pinch pennies. If we go in and create a VPN, you can choose not only an IP address, you can also choose a name. So you can not only type in the IP of the other side, but you can also say mydomain.dnsalias.com, whatever it might be. And the other side, that'll be the other location's DNS name that has the dynamic DNS configured. So now you can actually create a site-to-site -site VPN tunnel using dynamic IPs. And both sides will be able to connect to each other and start a tunnel up to each other because that dynamic DNS name will be always updated with the latest IP. Does it work all the time? No. Sometimes there are occasions where if you have a failover uh, internet connection, which I'll show in, in another video, or you have some sort of weird routing problem or something like that, um, the, or your, your account has some sort of issue in the DNS provider. There, there are situations where it's not perfect. Uh, if your IP changes quite often with your provider, it might not be a good choice uh, because then every time that IP changes, then the tunnel has to renegotiate. You have to rely on dead peer detection to kick in and kill the tunnel and then restart it. So it's not, it's not perfect, but for those who have non-critical applications, I guess you could say, and want to have a site-to-site -site tunnel and have that convenience, for example, having a site-to-site -site tunnel to your house or something like that, you can use that dynamic DNS name to increase your ability to connect from one side to the other without having to do a, a true dynamic unknown aggressive mode tunnel. Uh, and, and it gives you some a little bit more usability with, uh, with getting to the other side. And it gives you a little more uh, percentage uh, increase in, in keep getting that tunnel up.